Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome back to Sky Factory 2.5. So we got a couple of things going on here today. Uh, so I set up some stuff over here and I actually had this set up in the last episode. I just didn't show it. But this is automatically producing lava from cobblestone and then turning that cobblestone into obs or lava into obsidian. So we have some liquid uh, transfer nodes here. I do happen to have this lava drum in here. I was saving this stuff for a while and I just didn't bother to change it. This whole thing could be simplified just simply by removing this transfer node and the drum, just having the uh, lava pumped straight from the crucible into the stone barrel. And then we have water on top of the barrel. So as soon as it fills up with lava, it turns into obsidian. We have an item transfer node on the bottom of the uh, barrel and that pulls the obsidian out, puts it into a better barrel for us, and then we can have all the obsidian we want. So yeah, just every once in a while I'm going to have to put a little bit of uh, cobblestone into this barrel, but that it's going to take it a long time to use all of that up. So the other thing that uh, I've been thinking about right now is you know, even though we are producing just enough power here with all of our generators together, it is really a pain in the butt to sit here and go through and fill each one of these survivalist generators individually. So we are going to make up the QED and everything to go with it. So to start out with, we have the Ender Infused Obsidian. Ender Pearls with Obsidian. Now this is why I needed to set up the Obsidian production. So we take that stuff and we add some diamonds and some burnt quartz. Now burnt quartz is just quartz blocks run through the furnace. That gives us a diamond etched computational matrix. And then we put that in this recipe with more ender infused obsidian, some eyes of ender in a crafting table, and that gives us the QED. So now to power the QED, we need these Ender Flux Crystals. Those take more Ender Infused Obsidian and some Eyes of Ender. So we'll have four of those as well as the QED and that should be everything then. So we're gonna just set this up here somewhere. Uh, I guess right here should be fine. So we'll just set these guys up here. I guess that works. And so now what we need is to make this guy right here, the energy transfer node. So we need some item transfer nodes, gold, and a breadth first search upgrade. Now this is made with a depth first search upgrade and some speed upgrades and some blocks of redstone. The depth first is speed upgrades with blocks of redstone and gold, and the speed upgrades are blocks of redstone and gold. Well, that is going to be a little bit of a problem because much the same as the last playthrough of Skyblock or uh, Sky Factory, redstone is not in high supply. So we do have a little bit here. I have sifted probably, I don't know, five stacks of compressed dust and it is created a lot of ores but there's not a whole heck of a lot of redstone available so we do have enough to make a little bit here um, actually we can make a well here let's just redo this we can make at least 21 blocks here and I don't want to use all of my redstone but we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll grab a little bit of gold and we have these gold coins from loot bags. I'm just going to throw some of these into a furnace real quick. Those will smelt into uh, gold nuggets. So um, let's go ahead and spread these out a little. See if we can get a little bit faster smelting on them. So we need at least three of those gold nuggets. And uh, let's just go through here. Yeah, so we need at least three gold nuggets. I think we may need more than that. So we need two speed upgrades there. Oh, geez. So we need five speed upgrades and we only get four from one of those. Well, that kind of stinks. But, um, yeah, we're really close. So this is going to take a lot of redstone to do this. So 
we need to make the speed upgrades first. We'll need to make two of those. Already redstone is looking kind of low. So then we need these depth first upgrades. And we'll just make one of those. And we'll pull everything back out of here. And then we need the breadth first upgrade. And we can afford one of those. Wow. So now, finally, to make this, we need more gold and some transfer nodes. Well, the transfer nodes, um, hmm. yeah, actually, I don't remember the recipe on that. So we need some redstone, transfer pipe, smooth stone, and chests. All right, well, let's go ahead and grab some smooth stone. Uh, we need the pipes. I think I've got those here. Uh, chests, we'll just grab some wood out of here. So we should have everything here. And we need some ender pearls. So let's go ahead and make up some chests. Seems like you can never have too many of those. And that should be everything that we need here. So that'll make 20 of those. That's fine. And now to make up these guys, we need then the transfer nodes around the outside. Uh, gold ingots in the corners and then these depth first upgrades in the center so this is going to take a little while to craft up and I guess while I'm doing it I'm going to go ahead and throw in another stack or another set of uh, whatever uh, ingredients for this recipe so this is almost finished and there we go, transfer node. So now we can take some of our generators here and we can combine these guys down into a larger generator. Now I did figure it out that these survivalist generators are about five times more efficient than the sterling generators. We get 80,000 RF from one piece of charcoal out of the survivalist generators and we get 16,000 out of the uh, sterling generators so we definitely want to be using the survivalist generators if at all possible so now we can take these survivalist generators with a transfer node and that's gonna make us the eight times survivalist generator now this thing should burn the charcoal a little bit faster yeah so it's a minute and a half but we get 40 rf and it's not nearly as bad to find where we're at on the generator so let's see here we have one in our inventory there's two three four five six seven eight okay so we have just enough to make one more of those so i think what i'm going to do i'm going to make up another one of these survivalist generators times eight and I'll probably make up a third one as well since we've got three of the uh, energy transfer nodes. I'll have to figure out uh, what we can do on the redstone. Of course, we have the magical crops with the redstone seeds. But I don't know if I really want to get into that right away. But, of course, trying to uh, put together... A lot of dust production is not really a viable option either so I'll see what I can figure out and I will be back in a little bit so I just happened to stumble across something that seems really odd but if it works it would be a heck of an easy way to get started in Sky Factory and that is that we can take planks and turn them into wooden shears so I haven't even looked at these things once. So we're going to go ahead and grow an oak tree here. And oh, we happen to get a big one. But let's just see. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, that would make life so simple at the beginning. <laughs> oh god. You don't even have to have a crafting table to get these. Wow. Well, that would have been good to know about... I don't know, six episodes ago? 
They don't last very long, but that's fine. We don't, wouldn't really need them to. But, yeah, I think I'm just going to grab a crook and finish that guy off and break up the tree here. So, yeah, we'll just go ahead and grab this. And one block left. Wow. Really? Why you got to be that way? So, I set up a recipe over here in my uh, liquid crafter to make paper and we are going to be making paper because we want to get into Batania. So I did find there were some options for producing redstone. Now they're probably going to take a little while to get to, but I want to try something a little different this time around. I'm always about pushing for more power, more pulverizers, you know, more auto sifting, things like that. I want to try to push for something a little different this time around. So we are going to try to get into Batania and get into it pretty heavy right away. So first off we need to make ourselves a book. And uh, I think, well actually I think we'll just go ahead and make a whole bunch of books because we're going to need these for uh, crafting or uh, enchanting later on. So this is the same recipe we used before with the blank patterns from Tinker's Construct, a little bit of string, and then some paper. And of course we just saw the paper is made with wood pulp. Even though I do have some sugar cane, I just have not used it. So now what we do with this, we take one book and combine it with a sapling of any kind and that will give us the Lexica Batania. And I guess we'll throw these things up here into the composting chest. So the Lexica Batania is the book for Batania. It has all of the information that we need in here and to get started we really need to get some uh, pure lilies I think it is. Okay so basics and mechanics the pure or pure daisies. So to make a pure daisy we need to get uh, I think a mana pool. So yeah, we got twigs and things like that. Oh no, we just need the petal apothecary. Okay, so we need some mystical white petals. And the only way to get those is with uh, whatever uh, flowers. So we have this floral fertilizer and the recipe on this, whoops, that is not what I wanted. The recipe on the floral fertilizer is some dye and some bone meal. Now we have tons of dandelions and roses from when we were trying to get our Pam's Harvest Craft seeds. So I'm just going to use this one that I got out of a loot bag first. So we have the, uh, the whatever floral fertilizer that's going to give us some flowers and uh, yeah I'm just going to be doing this over and over and try to get a whole bunch of the white flowers We'll get a whole bunch of other stuff in the process, and so, yep, I will uh, get a whole bunch of this stuff going. Might have to make some more flowers to make it work, but I do have a whole bunch of bone meal pulverized up here, so we won't have a problem with that. And I think there is a way to get more than the standard... Wow, that's interesting. But more than the standard amount of rose red, just one for one. So let's see, the pulverizer will give us four. So that's probably how we'll do that. Now this would be the better option. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some witch water real quick so that we can get ourselves the rose bushes because bone meal can grow rose bushes. So when we were using the sludge boiler, we were getting some mycelium. That will be what we need to make our uh, witch water. So we'll put that down. We'll grab a bucket here, grab the water out of here, and then we'll break this barrel. Now we'll set this barrel on top of the mycelium and then put the bucket of water in it. Pretty simple. This will start transforming into witch water. And once it gets transformed, we should be able to throw in a poppy and turn it into a rose bush. 
So I'm going to go ahead and drop all of the rest of these back in here. Now I think we can do the same thing with the dandelion. So if we look at the uses on the dandelion, um, yeah, we can throw a dandelion in here and get sunflowers. And so since both of those are two tall flowers, we can bone meal them. So I think we're going to use the ro or the poppy first. This is almost done transforming. That'll be great. We'll be able to turn bones into dye. And so, rosebush. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the dandelion, but now what we can do here, we take some bone meal and we just hit the top of this with bone meal and you can see we've got roses flying everywhere. So we get tons of bones from our mob farm. I can pulverize those for a six to one return of bone meal in the pulverizer. So we will have absolutely no problems getting enough bone meal. You see, we've got quite a bit of it in there anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna make up a whole bunch of floral fertilizer, get a whole bunch of the Batania flowers, and I'll be back in a little bit. So guys, I got a great deal, plenty of the dyes, and I made a stack of floral fertilizer. Got an awful lot of flowers. I was just spamming that in this area here. Broke all the flowers and then turned them all into petals. You just you do that just by taking the flower, putting it in your crafting grid, turns it into the petals, and you get two per flower. So yeah, so like here where we've got 40 of the mystical cyan petals, that means we had 20 of those flowers. So to continue on here, we need to make a petal apothecary next. So the petal apothecary is just some cobblestone, cobblestone slabs, and a petal. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We only need one of them. And actually, I think we're probably going to use the magenta petal for this because I just don't see a lot of need for that particular petal. And huh, those turn back into cobblestone, that's good. So we'll just go ahead and drop that back in there. So the petal apothecary <clears throat> is pretty simple. We take and drop a little bit of water in there and update a lighting glitch. So we drop that in there. Now we want to make the pure daisies. Now that takes white petals, so we'll Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. Now we add a seed, and there we go. We got ourselves a pure daisy. So we're gonna do this a couple of times. One, two, three, four, and there we go. So, yep. Now the use of these things, we place these out on the ground, and we'll go ahead and place them one there and one here so that gives us enough room now what we want to do is grab some wood so we'll grab a stack of wood and also we want a stack of smooth stone so this will change logs into living wood and stone into living rock so yeah, I'm going to be doing a little bit of this. This is just kind of a time-consuming process. I think it takes 90 seconds from when you place down the block until it changes. So yeah, I'm going to uh, probably set up an infinite water source over here and make up as many of these pure daisies as I can. And uh, I'll be back once I get a little bit of resources together. So I've been making the living rock for some time here now. I made a bunch of the living wood, but I need more of the living rock because like I was saying before when we started the series, I want to make uh, different islands out of different blocks and we are going to be using quite a bit of living rock in the island that we build for Batania. But I found out a couple of really interesting things. Of course, first off, we can use vein miner to mine an entire patch of this stuff, which is really nice. Then I also set up this uh, area of smooth stone underneath so that I could use a diamond builder's wand to place down the blocks. Now I had to leave this gap here in the middle just to keep it non-spawnable 
It would be nice to have some magnum torches, and I don't have any of those yet, but we do have quite a bit of the living rock already. And, uh, yeah, I found out another really interesting thing here, too. The pure daisies will turn still water into snow. So I have also been making a little bit of snow. I have 20 blocks of it. Uh, we have, on the uses for this, we have frosty bricks from Batania, and we also have some snow bricks from Mine Factory Reloaded, as well as a few other little things. So this gives us a few more options in building, and uh, we could set something up to automatically harvest that snow if we wanted to, like a block breaker or something like that, because it won't break the block if it's water, but it will break it once it turns into snow. So we could figure something out with that. Right now, I think we're okay, but uh, yeah, that's something I can think about if I decide I want to use those frosty bricks for something. Now, unfortunately, my diamond wand is just about broken, so I'm not going to bother placing down any more bricks right now. I made up a whole bunch more of the floral fertilizer and ran through, I think, another two stacks of it. And we have quite a few of the mystical petals now. We're not going to be having too much trouble with that for a while. But now the next thing that we need to do is make ourselves a mana pool. So the mana pool will... Uh, be basically like a depository or a tank for our mana and it allows the mana to be used for crafting recipes and you know energy and whatever else we can do with mana so that's just five pieces of living rock pretty simple and then to put the mana into the uh, mana pool we need a mana spreader so this is just some living wood and a petal and yeah, nothing major. And I guess I did forget we also need to make a wand of the forest. So the wand of the forest takes four, four of the living wood and then we will need a couple of petals. And I suppose we'll take uh, one lime and one light blue. I don't know why, I just, I, for some reason I feel like lime and light blue. So first we need to take our two living wood and turn them into living wood twigs. We need two of those, place those here. We go with a lime petal here, and I think we need the blue one here, or maybe here. Or do we need three of these? Yeah, we need three. Darn it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and go grab another one. I forgot to check that recipe. Mainly because I forgot it. <laughs> well... Let's go ahead and make ourselves up one more twig. We'll place in our twigs, we'll place in our petals, and now we should get our wand of the forest. So this is going to be important for binding our mana spreader to our mana pool, or generating uh, flora to the mana spreader, whatever. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to make ourselves some generating flora. Now we are going to start out, as you pretty much have to, with either day blooms or nightshade. The day blooms are made with uh, two yellow flowers, one light blue and one orange in the Petal Apothecary. And I'm sorry about my phone, but uh, yeah, that's the day bloom. They produce mana during the day and the nightshade take two black petals, one purple, and one gray, and uh, these guys produce at night. Now I believe we have uh, these set up to where they die off in three days. I don't know for sure, but so we're going to go ahead and do this. So we go with, uh, let's see, we need to change the configuration here just a little. So we go with an orange, a blue, two yellow, and a seed and a bucket we'll go ahead and um, grab some snow so that we can get some water here and since there's no uh, flower there we won't get it back oh we don't have enough orange whoops well we'll make up a couple of those that should be enough this is enough to uh, test it out we're gonna go ahead and go sleep so that it's daytime 
And then we're going to place down our flowers and our mana spreader and our mana pool. And this will allow us to progress on to the next phase. So I suppose we'll put our mana pool right here. A little lag spike there, I don't know what happened. But so we've got that. Next we're going to place down our day blooms. So we'll place those here. We're going to place down our mana spreader. And then we will grab our wand of the forest. We shift right click on it and then shift right click here. And you can see now we are shooting our mana into the mana pool. So uh, these guys, we need to bind them to the mana spreader as well. And so we're slowly getting mana into the mana spreader. So once that mana spreader gets enough mana in it, it will shoot it over here to the mana pool and we'll have something to work with. So we're going to grab a few more of those and I'm just going to make up a few more of the flowers here. And uh, yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. And I have a feeling we're running out of time for the episode, but uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure. So just as I thought, we had our day blooms disappear. Now we did get a little bit of mana out of that, so we will be using that to try to get some better generating flowers. Now I was looking through the Lexica Botania, and there's a little bit of information about a lot of these generating flowers, and I think the one that we're going to be trying to get to is this Gormar Gormarilus. But uh, this one eats food. So with Pam's Harvest Craft, we can make some really good food that we can feed this thing and get tons and tons of mana. The only problem with that is we need some runes to go with that. So instead, I think we're just going to be going with the standard old-fashioned endo flame, And we need some mana powder for that. And to get the mana powder, we need to throw a little bit of gunpowder through our mana... Or our yeah, through our mana pool, and we'll get the mana uh, the, the, the words, the mana powder. So let's head over here. Oh, and our stars must have just uh, gone together into a pile. That's neat. So there's a couple other things that I want to try to get here if we have enough mana. So we are going to grab a little bit of iron. No. Okay, we have it in block form forgot we'd run out of uh, room there and then I think we need just some glass and a piece of gold and I think that might be it so first off we're gonna drop one piece of gunpowder in here that will turn it into the mana powder so let's go ahead and do that so then we need uh, I think eight iron and we're gonna drop this in there Yes, we did have enough. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to make the Ring of Magnetism. Now, the Ring of Magnetism, we need this Mana Lens Magnetizing and then four Mana Steel. The Mana Lens Magnetizing takes gold and iron and a man Mana Lens. So the Mana Lens takes Mana Steel and a piece of glass. So we'll start out with that. Then we need our gold and one piece of iron. There's our mana lens, and then we will go like this. And there we go, ring of magnetization. So we can put this in our baubles and put it as a ring. And now if we have like our uh, stuff here, you can see we could just, it just comes right into our inventory. That is pretty darn cool. So now I can probably remove the conveyor belts at the mob farm and not have to worry about the mobs trying to be uh, going through the wall. That will be nice. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm going to just drop this stuff off here. So we got that and this stuff here. There we go. So let's head back over here. And uh, actually, when I think about it, yeah, I set the... Uh, harvester over to shear the leaves so we have tons and tons of uh, leaves here blocking up the chest and wow we have a lot of them 
But we're going to drop these in here. I was using some flowers, so you can see it's kind of funky looking. But so now we need to make ourselves the... Uh, oh, jeez, now I forgot the name of it. The Endo Flame. So we need some brown petals, red petal, and a light gray petal. So two brown. Um, now I've forgotten. Uh, light gray and a red. So light gray and red. Okay. And let me guess. We need a seed. I would imagine we need a seed. Okay. Well, let me go grab a seed. And this shouldn't be too hard to grab. We'll just uh, harvest a little bit of wheat. And there's the seed. And I love that ring of magnetization. That is really going to make life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to drop in our two brown flower petals. One red, one light gray, a seed. Wait. Um, oh, mana powder. There we go. So we get our endo flame. So the endo flame, now we can place this down next to our mana spreader. We will grab a little bit of charcoal. And every piece of charcoal will produce a little bit of mana. So this will pick that up. Uh, yeah, it managed to get it before my ring did. But so this will start producing mana at a fairly good rate while it has the... Uh, charcoal in it it'll burn just as long as charcoal would in a furnace so we can start getting some mana now and that will be pretty cool we don't have to worry about our mana supply too much anymore I'm gonna try to make up a few more of these I had an automated system in the last sky factory but I don't think I'm gonna bother with that because we are going to try to get the Pam's harvest craft stuff for the uh, Gormaralis, or however you say that. But anyway, I do think we are just about out of time. So I am going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to give a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts or comments, be sure to leave those down below, and I will see you next time. Bye!